What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1992 Volkswagen Polo GT. Up front is a 1.3 liter inline four and down below is a five speed manual transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this Polo GT because I am here in the United States of America where this vehicle was never originally sold. This particular example of the Polo GT was imported here from Italy and and so this car has an incredible story that I am excited to share with you today. But if you would like to share your vehicle's incredible story with me, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out, and I come out to you. But let's get back to that 1.3 liter under the hood, making a whopping 74 horsepower. Well, it's not a rocket ship, but it's a heck of a lot better than the other trim levels. The GT trim level of the Polo was the top of the line and it got the biggest, most powerful engine that they put into the Polo in 92. You could also get a one liter, but this was the 1.3 liter and it is zippy. It's very, very zippy. Am I gonna dominate at my next drag race competition? No, but that's not really what the Polo was designed for and that's not really what the Polo is supposed to be. So I'm happy with my little 1.3. Like I said, paired to it, interestingly enough, five-speed manual transmission. I feel like for a vehicle of this style, four speeds were more used in the late 80s and early 90s. So I'm very, very happy to see the five-speed here. Shifter is pretty good. It's really, really simple and easy to drive. Nice and light clutch, light throw. And that's what I've always praised about Volkswagen products. Last but not least, of course, the Polo is front wheel drive. So how's it feel to actually drive the Polo GT? Well, it's not a star studded experience. It's not shaking me to my core with how good it is, but it is very, very fun and very zippy. You just kind of lightly toss it and chuck it around and slap it on the tush every once in a while and you'll have a good time. Visibility is fantastic. The steering is very, very direct and very confidence inspiring, which is always nice to have for steering. And overall, it's just, it's fun. It's not groundbreaking, but it is fun. And sometimes that's all that matters. So with that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I do have a very simple gauge cluster. On the left is my speedometer, which does highlight 50 kilometers an hour in red. Normally here in the States during this era, we got cars highlighting 55 miles an hour because of our highway speed limit. This is the in-town speed limit over in Europe, which was about 27 miles per hour. Kind of an interesting quirk there. Another quirk off to the right is that this vehicle actually gets a tachometer. So that was part of the GT package, not only the hopped up engine and red pinstriping, but it gets a tachometer for those adrenaline junkies. And off to the right, I have my coolant temperature, fuel and warning lights, as well as a little digital clock. On the steering wheel, don't have anything, nothing. Zippo, nada. Off to the left, I do have my headlight switches, as well as a climate control vent. On the door, I have my manual windows, manual mirrors, and manual door handles. Everything is manual, manual, manual. Speaking of which, moving into the center, we do have an Alpine radio. This is not the factory radio, and the owner is unsure if this was optioned with a radio back in the day because this was so sparse on options. I do have defrost and my fog light switch, which is really cool to see. And then down below, I have my climate controls, which are heat only. This was not outfitted with AC. There were no polos that came with AC. So if you see me sweating bullets throughout this video, mind your business. Then we have a little pull out ashtray and cigarette lighter, the only features that really matter. And then moving into the center, we have some storage cubbies down below and the shifter. The shifter does come up from the floor, so it is rather tall. It's not what you would call a short throw shifter, but it's fine in doing the job. And it's not super exact, but I can't really complain too much about a vehicle that has been to so many countries, been through so many hands and people. I'm sure the bushings are pretty worn down. Then we do have a handbrake, meaning I don't have any factory cup holders here in the Volkswagen Polo GT. So unfortunately for me, it fails the big friggin' bottle test. The seats are pretty comfy. They look so unapologetically 90s. 
They're just out of an arcade of the era, and I love the look of them. And they actually are pretty comfortable. For being a bigger guy, which wasn't as typical in Europe, I actually fit pretty well in here. This car wasn't designed for my big American body, and yet it's accepting it pretty good. So I'm happy to see that. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. So I'm in the back almost, hold on. All right, now I'm in the back of the Polo GT. Um, this is not built for me. Little European families, sure. I'm sure that they would do just fine back here. But me, uh, no, not sure. Um, the same fabric from the front carries on, which is pretty cool to see. I do have, <laughs> I have ashtrays back here, which is just funny priorities in my mind. I do have these really long side windows too. I mean, you can see over here, this one, that's like a two, three foot window. I mean, it's giant, which is really cool to see. Other than that, nothing really crazy right home about back here. Uh, it's getting really toasty. <laughs> so I'm gonna get out before I'm asphyxiated, but let's hop out and take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. Around the back of the Polo GT, big thumb button there to pull up. And it does have the privacy cover. However, before it was sent to the US, a previous owner must have rested something on it for a long time and it has bowed. So this is not how it normally sits. Normally it would be completely flat, but just seeing a Volkswagen Polo privacy cover is something unique on its own. Once we do pull it up, you do get tons of space back here. Really, really impressed with the amount of space and just interior packaging that Volkswagen was able to pull off here with such a tiny automobile. I mean, this thing is really, really small, and yet it does have backseat space for people not American size, and it does have ample trunk space. I would feel totally fine going on a week-long trip with my luggage back here. So very, very cool to see in the Polo GT. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and this is one of my favorite parts of the Polo GT, is just how cute and just how friendly this little thing looks. It's just ready for an adventure. It says, let's go, come on, let's do it. And I am very happy to oblige. It's a fun little car and the looks really respect that. I also do get that red striping like I mentioned for the Polo GT package. So you don't mix it up with any of those small engine puny other Polos, heaven forbid. But now with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving a Volkswagen Polo GT. Well, my thoughts are this thing is really fun to drive. It's chuckable, it's light, it's airy, it's fun. It doesn't take itself too seriously. And that's what I enjoy about cars like this. It's what I also loved about the Fiat Panda that I drove. That's also what I loved about the Mark II diesel Golf that I drove. And so that carries on here. But I do wanna talk about just the history of the Polo because we never got it here in America and it's somewhat puzzling why. So this car was actually designed, of course, by Volkswagen of Germany, but built in Spain, just outside of Barcelona. When Volkswagen took over Seat, which was a Spanish automobile company, they started using their factories for their own cars, and so the Polo came out of that. This came out of the Seat factory. And then it was sent and sold to some individual or multiple individuals in Italy, where it lived most of its life until it was sent here. So for those of you keeping track at home, that's four countries which had a hand in making this review possible. I can only imagine several more if this car was ever road tripped or driven outside of Italy. So this car is quite the little global machine, but why didn't we get it here? Well, my theory as well as the theory of the owner is that Volkswagen wasn't gonna make much money on this. We already had the Golf and the GTI here in the States and we were pretty happy with that. And so because the profit margins of this car were so thin, it didn't really make sense to sell it here in America. By the time the import fees were paid and the dealer fees were paid and the tax right, left, and upside down were paid, Volkswagen wasn't gonna make a whole lot of money on these. And there wasn't a whole lot of demand for anything smaller than the Golf that we already had. So the decision was made to never bring these to American streets. But joke's on you, Volkswagen. Here we are in middle America driving a Volkswagen Polo. This car is incredibly cool, incredibly unique and was just such an interesting experience 
to take out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to the owner, Chris. We are filming a bunch of his vehicles here today. I'm excited to share all the kooky and weird cars you're seeing on screen now. If they're not already up on the channel, they will be soon. Chris has been absolutely awesome to work with. I can't wait to experience his other vehicles and work with him more in the future. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.